Okay, so in this What is Wednesday, I wanted to try to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be sort of working in code here while giving you a little example about what I'm talking about. Uh, and this topic's been sort of done to death in sort of various animations. So I wanted to take this question, what is an API from a more uh, of a developer's standpoint. So if you are a web developer, this video will be useful to you uh, if you do not know what an API is, or maybe you just want to solidify something. So by definition, essentially an API is just a way to interact with an application. And you could think of things like, you know, YouTube or IMDB, those are all applications, or maybe it's the server side component of your website. These are all applications. But you could also think of it as libraries that you're using. Uh, if you want to use the Stripe payment system, you'd be using Stripe's API to interact with Stripe. So it's a basically a way that your system can interact with other systems. Now, as a web developer, there's going to be two primary ways that we interact with APIs. And not to say that this is it or that this distinction is hard or something like that. I'm saying that in your day to day, this is how you will interact with APIs. Now, the, the first of which is through uh, what's typically called like a network request. And as you can see in this code example, I'm using a basic async function called git movie. This movie is waiting on a fetch of a specific URL. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this URL right now. And so basically I'm running the fetch function here to hit a URL. It's going to return some data and I'm going to wait on that data. And then I'm going to at the end of it have a movie. So what's up with this URL? Well, this URL is the API that we are able to hit. As in the moviedb.org is just one example. You can see here the moviedb.org. Uh, I have no relation to them. They have a nice free API to test out, so I use it for a lot of examples. Uh, basically, what happens is you hit a specific URL. Let me actually move this browser down here so you can see more of the browser. Uh, you hit a specific URL with an API key, right? This is basically a key that lets you in the door. This is a, a locked system and this key will let you in. And when you hit this URL, you don't actually get a website. What you get is a bunch of data. And this data is available for anyone who has a key to access it, right? So in our code example, what we're saying is, hey, go to this address, right, where this data lives with your key and get all of the data. And that data comes back. And, you know, if you're looking at this code and thinking, hey, you need to try catch, it's an async function, don't worry about that. These code examples here aren't necessarily like hard and fast or something like that. The idea here is simply that we are able to go to a URL that makes data available for us and accept that data. Now, this URL that has data available to us is the API. And lots of services have an API. For instance, I use the YouTube API to import all of my videos onto Level Up Tutorials. You can also use APIs for various platforms to interact with them, such as accessing Google Maps in your application. Like I mentioned before, interacting with a payment system, maybe like Braintree or Stripe, pretty much if you have a system that you want to interact with, whether it's to grab data or to do something, then you're going to be using their API. The API is the information that has been publicly available to you, either fully public or via a key. Right, and this key is typically some long string, like you can sort of see mine is here. I don't use this API, you, I wouldn't recommend stealing my key. Uh, typically you wanna keep all of your keys private, but this isn't necessarily a huge deal. You are typically granted a key from the system that is making this API available. There's also totally public APIs too that don't need a key. However, many need a key simply just to track your usage. For instance, if I was using the movie DB and I was grabbing an exorbitant amount of data for them every single day, they're gonna be able to tie that back to me with my API key. Now, every single company's API has their own terms, so obviously that's something you're going to want to check out. So like I mentioned that uh, one of the ways you interact with an API or another 
or another system's application is through get or post requests, aka uh, getting or fetching data or telling it to do something. Now, a newer way to do network requests is through things like GraphQL. You could have a GraphQL query that says, hey, give me the movie and the title. And well, your GraphQL client, if it's set up correctly, will then go ahead and hit that API and get you that correct information. Now, some GraphQL systems actually just use the fetch API under the hood and you just don't notice it. You're just writing this kind of code and you don't ever have to touch uh, the fetch are hitting a specific endpoint. By the way, this URL is occasionally called an endpoint. Uh, so basically, you'll have a new kind of way to do network requests using GraphQL. If you want to learn more about GraphQL, there is a what is GraphQL video in this what is playlist. GraphQL is like an exciting new technology to work with APIs. Okay, so very fitting that uh, we talk a little bit about GraphQL in this video. Okay, so those are two primary ways that you work with another application through both Git and post requests, as well as systems like GraphQL. Now, the second way that we work with APIs is through a public method. Now, you may have noticed some of my tabs open. I also have this tab for React Router. You may have come to an application or a package that you use in your code, such as React Router, seen the word API here and wondered why this is called an API. Now, some libraries have a whole bunch of stuff going on under the hood. Now, the only things they want to make available to you are those things that are public, aka the API. So, the API here in a library like React Router is saying, hey, these are the things that are available publicly for you to use, right? These are the methods, functions, classes, whatever that you can use inside of your own application. So you can see in our little code example here, I have a library. Let's call this library some lib. Okay, now some lib has a whole bunch of stuff going on under the hood. However, they only want you to be able to access some things because maybe only some of those things are useful for the end user, aka you, right? So we have those things made available publicly to us. That way, so when we say some lib dot do a thing, it does a thing. And that way the library does the thing that we want it to do and we're able to interact with it correctly. So the API is all of the things that are available within this library, right? Whether it is in React Router, we have a switch component, we have a static router component, a router component, but we also have some uh, more interesting things like a with router wrapped component we have a uh, function called match path and stuff like that. These are things that React Router is making available to us, aka the API. So to wrap this video all up, uh, as a developer, there are two ways you primarily work with APIs, through network requests, aka give me that or do that over the network. And if you're making your own requests, you're probably using the fetch API because that is the most recent and common way to do it or you are probably on the new hotness, which is called GraphQL, which is a new sort of query language for fetching data from an API. Now, the second again is through public methods, AKA methods, functions, components, whatever that is made available to you through a library or software package. So this is an API. I hope that cleared up any sort of doubts that you had about what an API is for web developers. Now, if you have some sort of edge case or other alternative experts explanation, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear uh, what your explanation for an API is. If you think that could be helpful for anyone, as always, let me know what you want to see on What Is Wednesday. I do a new video every single Wednesday where I answer a what is question about what is some sort of concept within web development. Now, I've mentioned GraphQL a couple times, which is a new way to interact with APIs. On leveluptutorials.com, there's a Level 2 React Native with GraphQL series that just came up where I teach you how to build native applications using GraphQL. In addition, I also have a full stack GraphQL series with Media React and Apollo, which is totally free, where you do 25 videos of working with Apollo in GraphQL. Now, in addition, if you're not interested in learning GraphQL, I also have a Redux and React for Everyone series where we work with 
with standard APIs using the Fetch API. So check out all that stuff if it interests you, or if you want to become a pro and get access to some of these exclusive courses, head on over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash pro and sign up. It would mean a lot, and I could continue to make these awesome, awesome free videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.